ice cream. It is delicious, refreshing, melting in the mouth. This dessert is loved by everyone, but who knows what it's made of? In addition to milk and sugar, of course. In this program, Misha Mazlov will figure out how algae, acacia, gold, and pickled cucumbers became ingredients of ice cream. The territory is 180,000 square meters, manufacturing buildings equipped with modern technology. The scale of the enterprise is impressive, and this is not an automobile or a metallurgical plant. People make waffle cups and Eskimo pies here. To find out how ice cream is produced, you need to put on this sterile, literally a spacesuit with a hood, put on special shoes, a beard cover, wash your hands. Now the legs. And after this, you should put a special disinfectant on your hands. Well, that's it. Now I'm clean. We can go. Walking around the ice cream factory is a very serious deal. You can move strictly following the green lines. White ones are for transport, and yellow, a working area where outsiders are not allowed to enter. Now we are on the way to the warehouse, and we need to wear a special signal vest for this. In fact, it could be better to use a jacket. Tons of raw materials which are necessary for making ice cream are stored here. Ingredients should not be deteriorated, so the temperature in the warehouse does not exceed 5 degrees. In all these jars and boxes, future ice creams and sorbets are hidden. This is milk powder. This is sugar. And this is various berry stuffers, nuts, chocolate. Everything is very tasty. And uh, there are stabilizers, emulsifiers for mixtures over here. This is the main ingredient that turns a liquid milk formula into an airy, tasty ice cream. At the factory of the future, ice cream should go through the same stages as in the laboratory. Only everything is much bigger. In the peak season, the plant produces up to 200 tons of ice cream per day. Ingredients are mixed, not manually, but in a special mixer. The production is computerized and the whole process takes place in closed tanks. The control of the process is carried out from this computer center. The number of monitors and multitasking reminds us of a flight control panel. The mixture moves through the pipe for the ice cream to proceed through all the stages. From mixing to freezing, the future dessert overcomes about two kilometers of highways. As we already know, in order to prepare ice cream, its ingredients must undergo thermal treatment, pasteurization, which destroys harmful microorganisms. The next important stage of production is homogenization. It occurs here in this device, which looks pretty unremarkable from here. And right behind me there is a device called a homogenizer. It's sort of an internal combustion engine with a combustor chamber in it. The mixture is fed into the device and passed through a narrow opening under high pressure. As a result, fat globules decrease by several tens of times. This helps to make the homogeneous mixture. The process of homogenization affects the structure and consistency of the future ice cream. To improve the properties of the mixture, some manufacturers use emulsifiers. They are necessary for mixing substances that, due to their molecular composition, cannot dissolve into each other. Like fat and water, the emulsifier splits fats, allowing them to mix with other particles. Emulsifiers are needed in order to get the desired whipping of ice cream. So the ice cream keeps its shape on extrusion lines, so it guarantees necessary consistency of the product. After the mixture has become homogeneous, it must ripen. The future ice cream is pumped into a special tank and stays there in a temperature of 5 degrees for 6 hours. The mixture ripens here in these containers which hold 16 tons. They are called tanks. There are 33 of them in this compartment. 
It is some kind of a tank brigade. An ice cream factory has its own laboratory, and its experts can distinguish the taste of Madagascar vanilla from Tahitian. With the first spoon, some real sommeliers in the field of ice cream work here. Seems like it is simply vanilla, but in fact, vanilla has hundreds of flavors. Vanilla could be sweet or spicy. It could be some kind of bitter, too, if you cook strawberry jam at home. Berries could be fresh and sour. It could have a taste of grandmother's jam and a lot of other shades of taste. What we do here is we try ice creams and divide their tastes. In the experimental laboratory, specialists create new types types of ice cream, select fillers, fillings, nuts, and other components, dyes, and flavors. Natural ingredients have preferences. Natural additives are very grateful materials in the work. They will never lay you down. Synthetics could often be capricious. Almost nobody knows how it will behave in storage, whether the fragrance remains stable, whether the color will be the same as you planned. Natural aroma fails very rarely. Yes, maybe it is not so catchy and bright. It is necessary to put more of it, but we still get what we want with it. Today, you can find about a hundred flavors of ice cream in shop, but laboratory specialists sometimes move away from popular recipes and create something extravagant. We try to make the most exotic taste just for ourselves. There was ice cream with pickles, ice cream with beer, non-melting ice cream, and that is a boundless stretch of our imagination. Like, I took fresh cucumbers, salted them, and then made ice cream with them. One of the most popular natural dyes is beta-carotene E160B. It is made from carrot. It gives the ice cream an orange color. Red color of cold desserts is basically made out of beet extract, which is marked as E162. And this blue ice cream is the result of the last laboratory experiment. Yes, the blue color is alarming. This is not a surprise. There is not so much blue color in nature, so when we see a blue ice cream, we of course think, and what is inside of this? And this is spirulina, an ordinary seaweed. In nature, it has blue-green color and we can get blue, beautiful, bright pigment out of it. Maybe it is not very persistent during heating, but it works with ice cream very well. Moreover, it is healthy. Scientists say that spirulina can beat cancer cells. The mixture for the ice cream has matured, and it can be sent to freezing. The process of whipping and freezing. As far as I understand, this is some very important installation, right? Yes, this is one of the most important machines in the production of ice cream. It's called a freezer. Here in this machine, in the cylinder, the mixture is saturated with air, frozen to a temperature of about 6.5 degrees Celsius, as we can see here. The liquid mixture enters the rotating cylinder. It will whip there. The space between the walls of the cylinder is fed with refrigerant, which ensures a uniform freezing of the mixture. Then the future ice cream is saturated with air. This process is called fissuring. Thanks to it, ice cream gets a creamy structure. The production of waffle cones is pretty much the same as baking pancakes. Only the dough does not pour out into the pan, but into special cylindrical shapes. The billet passes through four meters of the gas oven. Then the excess dough is cut off from its surface, and the finished cone enters the tape. Now we go directly to the dosing zone of the mixture and the glaze. As we see, there we have ice cream covered by glaze, and here is the zone of dosing of the mixture. Probably it was very difficult to adjust all this so smoothly and perfectly that all portions would come out similar to each other, like twin brothers. Choosing the pipelines for this zone was the most difficult part. We carefully choose their lengths. They should be the same. We kept the pressure in the dispenser also at the same level, so that portions always have the same shape, the same volume, and the ice cream going out with the same mass. Sergey, well, I think that the ice cream is ready. Can I take this one at least? Of course, take it, but do not eat. It is forbidden by internal hygiene rules. 
How is it possible? Well, maybe I can take it with me then. The filled portions are sent to the refrigerating chamber with the inner temperature minus 40 degrees. There, they will come through hardening and shaping process. Due to the extremely low temperature, people are not allowed to enter the cell. The chamber door was opened for a few seconds just for our video team. This place reminds us of the Kingdom of the Snow Queen. The last stage of production is packaging. After that, ice cream is sent for several days to the cooling chamber with a temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius. Only after that, ice cream is delivered to the consumers who definitely know what to do with it. Here was the whole day at the factory, which produces 23, just listen, thousand of waffle cups per hour. And I did not eat a single one. And here it is, deserved and so desired.